We were on a cycling trip down the coast, down the Pacific coast, from Vancouver to Mexico. And when we were on that trip, we just started being really aware of waste. I mean, we were traveling really slowly, and you notice garbage along the side of the road. And we were carrying our recycling with us, sometimes for days on end, trying to find recycling bins. We just really started thinking about how nice it is to live with less stuff and what an issue garbage is in our society. And when we came home, we were ready for the next challenge. One of the hardest things during the year was trying to convey to others why you didn't want something wrapped or packaged when you're trying to buy it. Take the plate next time. Don't take it in the hand because you don't make any point, believe me. You don't want to make a big fuss, but it was really frustrating because we knew that we were going to be responsible for that if we ended up with it. So we started just lying. I started saying I had a plastic allergy in restaurants so that people wouldn't give me straws and stuff like that. And then I started saying, I'm doing the zero waste thing, which worked out better as if it's like a community thing, everyone's doing it. Everyone's trying to, it's like, I'm on the Atkins diet. I'm on the zero waste diet. I think the hardest thing was saying no to free things, um, like free handouts at the store, or saying no to gifts, like people really wanted to give you things, and, and we just didn't want to have material items. And it's hard to say that without sounding rude. We didn't keep track of how much money that we saved from not buying all the stuff that year. We met a woman in Regina who said she did a very similar project a few years ago and she said she saved $30,000. I'm sure we also saved thousands, but the point of our project was not to, to save money and hoard money away. It was about to take that money and spend it on other things, so experiences like going out and doing things and sort of becoming tourists in our own town. A lot of people, when we were around them, I think felt guilty about garbage because um, they, they knew what our project was about and they were still producing garbage. Um, and that was not the point at all. Like, it was never intended to be about anybody else. It was just supposed to be me and Grant doing a challenge for ourselves. And somehow, I don't know, just being around the project influences other people. It was really interesting. Our friends and family were really supportive. Some people were, got really excited and started buying into the project and, you know, stopping using plastic bags themselves and things like that. Um, some people were tolerant of what we were doing, but I don't think they really understood why we were doing it until after they saw the movie and then they really got it. Yeah, friends had different reactions. I mean, sometimes we'd go over to their house and they would, they'd be like hiding their garbage because they didn't want us to see like we were the garbage police or something. Um, or sometimes they'd call, I had a call once, my friend called me up and she's like, I was just thinking of you because I was recycling my shampoo bottle. I guess we really got associated with recycling and zero waste and doing the right thing and, and people really wanted to come to us and tell us their stories, which I thought was really cool. Jen did, Jen did do all the work. I mean, every time I was making something, Grant was right there filming it. So, I mean, we were both there. Um, my hobbies tend more towards gardening and food preservation and baking and things like that. And Grant's tend more towards film and music. Um, but I have to say, Grant took a lot of flack. After we showed the movie to a few people, he took a lot of flack because it looks like he doesn't do very much around the house. And now, you know, we split the chores, and so we each have allocated days to cook dinner, so something good came of it. People often contact us and say, yeah, it's really cool what you guys did, but if, imagine trying to do it with kids, it would be impossible. Um, but Jen was following a few blogs. There's My Zero Waste in the UK. There's No Impact Man in New York. There's quite a few people out there that have kids that are, are living zero waste or really close to it. So I think it's possible, um, but maybe you have to make a few more concessions. And maybe you can't live zero waste, but you could get close. You, know, you just have to pick something that, that works for you. So maybe you're going to always remember to use your reusable shopping bag. Or say no to single-use disposable items like those plastic forks and spoons. Those are items that 
that we live without now and that it, it, my quality of life is still the same. I don't feel really sad that I can't get a fork to eat my salad with. Um, I just bring my own. It can just be a simple little thing as long as you really stick to it. And then once the one thing that you're doing becomes a habit, then you can move on to the next thing, and then the next, and then the next. Once the project ended, we just found that we couldn't go back. Because once you've been diverting so much of your garbage, it's not like you're gonna go back to the way it was and say, oh, I'm just gonna throw everything out now. Before the year, we took our garbage out every week, just like everyone else. During the year, we had the minimum amount. And then at the end of the year, um, what we do now is take our garbage out maybe every three months. It's about the size of a bathroom garbage can. And of course we buy stuff now, we live in a consumeristic society, we're consumers as well, but we try to be more ethical about the things that we're purchasing, or I like to think that we're being more ethical, and that we are trying to pick things that are made locally, or they're biodegradable, or have some kind of, you know, good quality about them, they're not just on sale. We both worked during the year, we both um, worked full time and we sort of fit this project into our lives. There was a definitely an adjustment period at the beginning, um, but uh, it just sort of became normal. I'd say after the first three months, it sort of the project became normal and the challenge came from filming each other all the time. Well, I guess we had more time to do this project because of the fact that we weren't going out and shopping and buying lots of stuff during the year. Well, I don't want to give the impression that I was doing all those things every week. Like, it's not like I was baking bread and making deodorant and making toothpaste and, you know, making all these things from scratch every single week. I was more like I was doing one or two of them a week. And the time that we were saving by not shopping in clothing stores and things like that, I was able to use for other things. The only thing I stocked up on is a Diva Cup, which is a reusable feminine hygiene product, um, which I love, by the way. But yeah, that's the only thing that I bought beforehand. And if I'd been really organized, I would have bought a set of those mesh bags that you can use for produce. That was like the first thing that I bought after the project ended. This is the number one question that we always get was, what do we do about toilet paper? Um, we did buy it, we did use toilet paper. But Jen found it at a janitorial supply place in a big box, big cardboard box, and we ended up just getting it not wrapped in plastic that way. When I think about environmental issues, I just think that there's so many different problems and sometimes it's really overwhelming. And so I hope that people see that we were able to just pick one thing and change that one thing and we still have lots that we can work on. We're not trying to get everyone to get four pounds of garbage in the air and say everyone do our project like this is the way it should be done. That would be totally idealistic. The idea is to encourage people and make it fun and maybe they can pick a couple things and change a couple things in their lives like hey I'm going to start composting or I, yeah I don't need to buy bottled water anymore stuff like that. I just want to say thank you to Jen for doing She's right there. She's right behind the camera. I want to say thank you to Jen for uh, doing all the work. Don't cry. I'm not crying. It was an emotional time.